All right, this is Calc AB, this notes three, we're gonna be talking about page five. And this is like a slightly different idea, but it's really interesting. So one of the things we can do is we can actually, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes if we know the velocity function, we can actually work backwards from the velocity function to the position function. And all we need to do is we need to just kind of like think about it. And uh, this will be a big idea. So let's, let's see if we can do this. So given the velocity function and the position at a given time, find the position equation. Or we might be given velocity and acceleration, we have to work back to position. So let's see if we can do this. So a lot of this is just kind of asking yourself, like, what would I take the derivative of to get this, right? Velocity is the derivative of position. So if my velocity is 2t plus 3, then I think my position should be, so I'm going to call it s of t. What do you take the derivative of to get 2t? Think of all the things you can take a derivative of. This looks like a power rule type thing. You would have brought the exponent down, subtracted 1. So maybe what we need to do is add 1 to the exponent and multiply by the reciprocal. That's a weird idea. That's actually going to work. So um, let me see. So I think this is t squared. And I think that that comes from, so I think that this part will go to this part, right? So I added one to the exponent. So I went from t to the first to t to the second. Then I multiplied by the reciprocal. Well, why would that work? So if you think about it, so where can I think about this? If you think about it, when you have the derivative of x to the n, right? You take that derivative and you get n times x to the n minus 1. All right, so if I want to reverse that, so if I, how would I show that? So if I want to reverse that, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. So that'll give me, this is going to look weird. Um, it'll give me x to the n minus 1. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, so plus 1. Then, Remember, we still have this n sitting in front of it. So what I'll do is I'll multiply by the reciprocal of what I get up here. And what I get up here is just n. And that's going to take me back to x to the n. So I add 1 to the exponent, multiply by the reciprocal of what I get. Right. So here I had 2t. I added, this was to the first, right? I added 1 which made it this, and then I multiply by the reciprocal of what I got, which was 2. Get 2 over 2 cancels t to the second. So that's, that's an idea that we're going to use a lot, and that's why I kind of like spent a lot of time talking about it. So what do you take the derivative of to get 3? Well, the variable is t, so it's got to have been 3t. Now for the big thing. If there was a constant in this function, what is the derivative of a constant? It's 0. So when you're looking at a derivative, there's no way to know if there was a constant there or not. So I'm just going to write plus c for a constant. This is a, a big deal. Um, so this became this. Now plus c, plus c is the thing of memes. Forgetting to write plus c, nightmare. How are we going to solve for this? Well, we also know that s of 2 is negative 4 which is kind of weird random information unless you remember to write plus c. So if I plug in, knowing that s of 2 is equal to negative 4, that means negative 4 is equal to 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus c. So what do we have here? Negative 4 is equal to 6 plus 4, 10 plus c. So c is actually negative 14. So overall, what is s of t? s of t is going to be the thing we got, so t squared plus 3t. But then we know that c is negative 14, so minus 14. This is our function that does it. So this, this function, for this function, s of 2 is negative 4, right? You get 4 plus 6 is 10, minus 14 is negative 4. And then also the derivative of this is 2t plus 3. That's our original position function. We did it. We worked backwards. Let's see if we can do it again. OK, so I'm going to use kind of the same ideas. Um, so oh boy, accidentally started a video there. 
move that out of the way. Um, that was healthcare triage. Been watching some of those. I enjoy those. Good information. Um, all right, let's see. So I'm going to try to get back to S of T. Okay, so I'm doing. I'm going to try to do this plus one times a reciprocal, right? So the derivative. I just think about it. What the derivative? Of what gives you t squared? Well, t cubed would give you three t squared. So how do I cancel that three that I would have gotten? It's going to have to be one third t cubed. So if you think about that, there's a lot of ways of thinking about this. I added one to the exponent of t squared to get t cubed. I multiply by the reciprocal of that three to get one third t cubed and take the derivative of that you get t squared. It works. Um, for the next one, I'm going to do largely the same thing. So uh, the derivative of t squared would be 2t. So there's an issue there because of this three. I'm going to go with three and then you know what I'll do? I'm just going to pull the three out as a constant multiple. And then I would have had one half t squared. The derivative of one half t squared is t and then three. So that's working. So that's our second thing. So this somehow has become this. Basically, we're reversing the power rule. And then minus 4t, because if I find the derivative of 4t, I get negative 4. And then I want to remember plus c right away. So I'm going to write it in. And then I'll go back and highlight this a little bit. So minus 4 became minus 4t. And then finally, we have our plus c. How do you deal with plus c? You use this initial condition. So once you know the initial condition, you can deal with plus c. So that's going to be s of 0 equals 5. So 5 equals, I guess I'll write this. This is, I mean, I'm plugging in uh, 0, so there's kind of no point. But for clarity, I guess, plus c. So I end up with c is equal to 5. So this, that's an eraser. So if c is equal to 5. So now put it all together to get like your position function. S of t is 1 third t cubed plus 3 halves t squared minus 4t plus 5. And you can check and see if um, you need to be able to plug in 0 and get 5, which definitely works. You need to be able to take the derivative of this and get t squared plus 3t minus 4, which works. So this is our position function. All right, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to cut the video and come back and talk about more of them going forward. So this is the plan. All right, and maybe maybe I should have cut it earlier because this one has some complications potentially. OK, so if v of t is equal to 1 over t minus pi sine of pi t, all right, so uh, what do I take the derivative of to get 1 over t? Where have we seen that? What is What function has a derivative that's 1 over x? So because you memorized all these things, you know that the thing you take the derivative of to get 1 over t is the natural log of t. Now, for complicated reasons, they're not really that complicated. Um, but for important reasons, there should actually be absolute value signs around this. I'm going to put them in. So the reason I'm putting them in is that technically the domain of the derivative is uh, everything except 0, which means that the domain of the original should also be everything except 0, possibly including 0. But certainly everything except 0 is like necessary. So how do I deal with that? Natural log of t just has a domain of t greater than 0. Throw in the absolute value, and suddenly you can go to negative infinity and infinity you just can't have zero. So this is our first step. So this 1 over t is going to become this. And for now, if, uh, if you don't really get the absolute value part, totally fine. That's, that's an OK thing. You could actually just go with the natural log of t if you need to on this. But just know they should be there. Um, and we will talk about that a ton more later on in the year. Uh, next thing, so I see that negative pi uh, like as a coefficient, I'm thinking that's just a chain rule thing, like because of the chain rule that's there for some reason. Uh, negative sine is the derivative of what though? So negative sine, I know, is the derivative of cosine. So what if I say cosine of pi t? And I'm basically guessing and hoping that it's right. 
Uh, I'm going to put a plus C here so I don't forget. What's the derivative of cosine? The derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of that thing times the derivative of that thing. So it'd be negative pi sine of pi t. I think it worked. So, I mean, notice we're, we're basically just guessing the answer as we go along. And that's okay. I mean, that's kind of like half of reversing derivatives, finding what are called antiderivatives, is sort of guessing. I mean, not exactly because you learn some rules and everything. Got to solve for C. We use this information. This seems like it might be unpleasant. Uh, so this will be five is equal to the natural log of, the absolute value of one is just one, uh, plus the cosine of pi plus C. So five is equal to, the natural log of one is zero, so that's gone. I'll write it though. Um, the cosine of pi is negative one plus C. So C is actually equal to six. So that's what we're getting for that. All right, let's put it all together to get this position function. So S of T is the natural log of absolute value. Oh, that's an X. It's hard. You write, you write X so often that uh, it's difficult to get away from writing it. Pi T and then plus six. So this is a function that has a derivative that's one over T and then uh, minus pi sine of pi t. And then also if we plug in whatever we're, if we plug in one, we get five. It's perfect-ish. I mean, it's good. That's perfect. I don't know. All right, so these are the problems we've done so far. I'm gonna come back in the next video, finish this, do a little bit on the calculator. Hopefully that works. Um, so I will see you there.